Hello everyone. Today's a continuation of yesterday. Yesterday we talked about honoring the young people. How we should always treat them with respect. But today, the verse of the day is 1 Timothy 5.17. Let the elders who rule well be considered, considered worthy of double honor. But especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. I love this. I really, really love this verse. There's many verses about honoring the elderly, but this one specializes in honoring those who labor in preaching and teaching. I remember a lot of different elderly people, and they've all had my reverence and respect. Absolutely. They've seen things. They've witnessed things. They have so many life stories. They, they, as, it, as Psalms 92, 14 says, they still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and grain. But when an elder person dedicates his life to teaching you spiritual things and things about your world and showing you what the real purpose of life is, Jesus Christ, it's, it's without measure. They, their, their honor is completely ridiculous. One thing I love about the elderly people that I grew up with in the, the 90s and the 80s was they were called the greatest generation. That was their generation. They grew up around World War II and the Great Depression. So they have really seen some things. They've seen some disasters. They have this, this look like nothing can bother them anymore because they've seen it. They've seen it at a young age. They have this general just wisdom. They had to grow up very fast in their time. I love that. But when one of them is preaching the word like my grandfather, day in, day out, day in, day out, trying to teach something to us, trying to give us something that we can carry with after he's gone, it becomes incredible. And I remember my grandfather, after my grandmother died, he didn't want to be here. He was done. He kept asking the Lord, Lord, please take me. How long, Lord? How long before I go home? How long must I stay here? But you know what he did after he, he would do that? He'd go and preach to us. Preach to us, preach to us. He couldn't even see. He had cataracts in his eye. Couldn't see. He was blind. But he could see more than anybody. <laughs> And you can really tell about a person's spiritual ways by the way they go out. How did my grandfather go out? He was taking a bath and he exhaled. And he was gone. Like that. Not a painful death, not a long, laborious death. He just exhaled out. He went home. He went, he went to be with mama, grandma. I really love that. I love, he, he's inspired me so much when you see an elderly person doing that and preaching the word and sticking to the truth of what God says. But I was going to talk about elderly people in general. But I think you know to respect your elders. I'll give you a few verses on, on it real quick. 1 Timothy 5, 1 to 2, do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father. Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, in all purity. 1 Timothy 5, 1, 2. Don't rebuke them. Encourage them. Encourage them. Thank them for what they've done. Thank you for their time as they teach you things. Proverbs 16, 31. Gray hair is a crown of glory. Glory, It is gained in a righteous life. How did you get that gray hair? You lived a long life. And how do you live, tend to live a longer life? By being righteous, by letting the Lord lead you. He's not going to take you out of here. He, he could, but he, a lot of times he's not going to take you out of here if you he, if he got stuff to do. You're doing his mission. It all depends. But greater is a crown of glory. It's gain for a righteous life. Job 12.12, 12, wisdom is with the age and understanding and lift of days. Even though a young man may be filled with the Holy Spirit, 
The Lord fills him with the wisdom of eternity. But an old man has really, really experienced it. He's experienced everything, good, bad. He's experienced, he's seen a lot of things. He's st studied a lot of history and he's been a part of history. First Peter 5, 5, likewise, you who are younger, be subject to elders. Clothe your, yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud and, but gives grace to the humble. Be subject to your elders, respect them, take care of them. When the older person gets older, they now become like children. Again, it's, it's like reverse, but guess what? You Not only do you respect your children, but you definitely, they, they're not children. They've been there. They've seen things. If they, if they sent something from a person and you're single or something, listen to them. They tell you things. You know what my grandmother told me? She said, Warren... There's no such thing as female friends. I told her one day, I was like, oh, that's, she's just a, a, a female friend. She said, Warren, there's no such thing as female friends. You're either married to them or you're not. When I started living by her advice, finally in my 30s, guess what? I found my wife. Why are you hanging out with me? You could be my acquaintance, <laughs> but... I'm trying to find a wife. You don't sit there and allow women just to hang out with you. But that wisdom was imparted to my grand imparted from my grandmother. We need a wife. We don't need female friends. What are you gonna do once you get married? Keep them around? No. It could be acquaintances. But when it becomes one, the only dealings with you should be with you and your wife. No more secrets. My grandmother shared that. 1 Peter 5, 5, likewise, oh, I already said that. Proverbs 23, 22, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. Don't despise their teachings. Don't despise their wisdom. Love them. Proverbs 17, 6, grandchildren are the crown of the age and the glory of children is their fathers. <laughs> I know both, I know my parents, <laughs> really wanted to see me and Christina have a grand a grandson for him. And 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 it, trust me, it it's so great for them to see their lineage pass on. Plus they get to spoil them, unlike the parents do. First Timothy five seventeen. Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy up. Well let's go back to First Timothy five seventeen. Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Amen. You can you could experience a lot of life. You could be very old. But guess what? If you've been old in the Lord and had all this experience in him. You change generations. You become like Abraham. Who has as many children as the grains of sand on the beach, as the stars in the heaven. And, and people listen to you because you've been around. Why waste your oldness? Why despise your age? Love it. It's a crown of glory. It's a crown of glory. Dear Heavenly Father, just, just thank you, Father. Thank you for the young and the old, Lord. Thank you for the wise, elderly people that we have, the, the ones that are soldiers for you to sit and pray and pray in their downtime. They're not just sitting, but they're praying, Father. They're not just trying to live another day and waste another day for themselves. It's not about a number game. It's about you. They're looking towards the next life. Thank you for that, Father. And Lord, may many be saved. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.